Okay, we are now recording. Yeah. Okay. Jason's with us from TextMan. We're talking about Snagit. Keep talking about Snagit, the premier screenshot and uh, screencasting, uh, basic screencasting package from TextMan. And Dave, I'm happy to answer that question if if you want me to. I would be delighted to have you do that. Let me get you up on the screen here. Sure. And I'm going to be looking at one or two cameras because I'm looking at the question. So this is my PC camera and my Mac camera's off. So, <laughs> so from the mystery user of Zoom here, uh, the biggest question you said is the difference between snagging and just recording a Zoom session or for that matter, Screencast-O-Matic. So I'll hit the screen. Oh, hey, Joe. Thanks. Appreciate it. So Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, if you've not heard of this, it's a it's a largely free, also paid version, online screen recording software. Um, the biggest things that are differences off the bat is, cam is Snagit is not just a screen recorder. It is a full featured image capture and annotation device. So not only can you grab still images and mark them up and change the, uh, the, the tint of the color, arrows, call-outs, images on top of images, torn page images, uh, multi-step tool. There's tons of stuff that we could go through on that. But the biggest difference between Snagit and Screencast-O-Matic is Screencast-O-Matic, the paid versions, are a yearly subscription. Snagit, you buy it once, you own it forever. Screencast-O-Matic has a cap on its recording capabilities, which I think for the free version is 15 minutes. Right. Sna Snagit is endless. It's basically the skill set and the capabilities of your computer based on RAM and storage. So while you could record a nine to 10 hour recording, I wouldn't, but you can. <clears throat> uh, but ultimately that's the major differences and the fact that Snagit itself uh, connects with our other products like Camtasia and TechSmith Relay and all these sorts of things. And they're built in uh, effortlessly. The other thing that Screencast-O-Matic allows you to do is allows you to do YouTube publishing, and that's it. You can save it as a local file and put it somewhere else where Snagit has multitudes of sharing options built into it, uh, both for still images and video. So it just uh, you're getting a more fully fleshed out image capture and editor and video capture tool that you don't have to pay a subscription on. Handing the baton back to Dave. <laughs> wait, wait, I have a technical question. Good. Sure. So we're, since we're talking about screen capture, one of the things that um, I have to do is capture uh, websites for printed publications. And typically in the print world, you need graphics to be like 300 DPI. But in the web-based world, obviously you want to have the minimal amount of DPI for an image, for example. So what's the convention now, 72 DPI for, for a typical picture on the web, right, if you're doing a website? So one of the things that I, I want to know is I've used Snagit to increase the, the DPI, even though I don't think it can really rebuild that high-res image, right? But it does work if I need to capture a web page and show, like make documentation or something. Am I reading that? Am I doing that correctly, Jason? Does it, is it able when I, you know, go, because I know I can go into Snagit and say, um, s capture it at a much higher res than it, than it was originally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you're talking about changing the DPI, Jeff, you're talking about uh, the quality of the image, right? Right. So when we change the DPI with Snagit, you're not changing the quality of the image, you're just printing it smaller. So the DPI in relation to the screen captures is just the aspect ratio of it. So you're actually not losing quality, you're just uh, printing it in a smaller package. Uh, can I do the opposite though? I guess that's what I'm asking. Can you grow it? Yeah. Uh, I want to say yes, I haven't done that. And then you're talking about like vector form images and whether right. or not it's going to smooth. Yeah. Um, I can't speak for every image on the net, but I think it's worth a shot. It, it has worked for me because mm -hmm. I've, you know, I've, I've captured 
like some of our instructional uh, web sites and put them in the class schedule, for example. And I sure. know I, I can't do a, a screen capture that's only 72 DPI. I got to give them a 300 DPI image. And I've used Snagit to capture at a higher res, but I wasn't really sure how it was doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyways, if you can't answer it, it's okay. It's just something I want, since I had you, I wanted to ask. I'll put a link uh, in the chat for everybody. This is a, a, a link that was published by uh, Mike Spink. Mike is one of our top tier support agents at TechSmith, and he actually speaks exactly about this particular issue with the new version of Snagit. So he published this two weeks ago. So it's Excellent. current. So I'm uh, that should be, yeah, you're pretty good. You're pretty good. <laughs> oh, thank uh, you, Jason. Sure. Uh, it's in the chat. Uh, it's it will be in the chat log, which I will publish along with the recording that we're making. Good question for the folks here. Thank you, Dave. Uh, since not everyone has the advantage of being on Zoom, some of them are actually sitting here in the room. <laughs> <laughs> And if, and if that made absolutely no sense to you, don't worry about it. It's not going to materially affect your use of snake. It will be on the final, though. <laughs> <laughs> sure, long story short, DPI stands for dots per inch. So it's the number of pixels that fit in an inch of a projected computer screen. Long, um, it, it goes along with the same conversation of... Uh, uh, aspect ratios, widescreen, 720p, all those things you hear about. It's the amount of colored pixels or colorable pixels in an inch of image. And what uh, what Jeff's trying to do is he's trying to get the cleanest looking image possible yes. so it doesn't look like a second-rate copy and paste on a widely spread in the scheduling system that he uses. Um, he's just looking for high level of clarity. Um, he's doing something... I would say is slightly more than an advanced level use of Snagit. And that's kind of one of the things that Dave is appreciative of, that you can do basic functionality with Snagit or you can get into the nitty gritty and make adjustments like uh, Jeff looks to do as well. Yeah, that's, we talked about, you know, what's the difference between using Snagit and some of these other packages or the Windows snipping tool for that matter if you just want screenshots. The answer is Snagit gives you far more capability to edit, massage, enhance the image that you take than, um, than any of these other packages. It's a really a full-featured graphics editor in many ways mm -hmm. in addition to everything else. So uh, that's one advantage. I'll speak to the uh, question about Zoom. I mean, we are recording this now. <laughs> I remembered to hit the record button. And why don't we just use Zoom to record things like this, to do screencasting? And you can. But you're going to find when you watch this recording that the video and the audio quality are significantly decreased over what you're seeing and hearing right now, for those of you who are online. And uh, there's a concern, particularly the audio, is so highly compressed that it can at times be difficult to understand. And there's a truism about multimedia that you're producing for any client population. Fuzzy video you can live with, as long as people can see what you're doing. Bad audio will have people turning, turning you off very quickly. Very irritating, it's very hard to deal with. And that is one of the li real limitations of Zoom. Mm -hmm. It just does not handle audio at recording. It does a great job with live audio, but the audio of the recording is so compressed that it, even with a lot of effort, it's, it's difficult to get it beyond merely intelligible. Snagit, on the other hand, not only captures extremely crisp, uh, uh, high-resolution screen video, indeed it records at whatever resolution your screen is set at. Mm -hmm. But it also uh, records audio beautifully. So that's a, that's a major issue. Not so, only that, uh, Jason? I, I just had a quick question, Dave, and I apologize for interrupting. Um, Not at all. 
I, I'd love to know, just out of morbid curiosity, the uh, live attendees in the room and the people online, how many of you are current Snagit users or are at least familiar with the name Snagit or feel like you should be familiar with the name Snagit? It's kind of one of those products where people are like, oh, I think I've heard of it. I'd just be curious to know. Now I can see everybody in the audience. Hi, everybody. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> see, I'm remembering this room. It was just... I'm telling you, less than two weeks ago. So, <laughs> so uh, show of hands real quick in the room. Okay. Let me let me pan. Yep. Nice. Okay, that's good. And we're getting. Uh, looks like we got about. We got a few people in chat. You can see that too, right? Yep. And I will save that chat log. I swear. Uh, when we get done. Great. Thank you. I'll keep reminding myself of that. Y'all help me, right? Would appreciate that. Another thing about Snagit that you're going to see here in very short order, I can take a lot of time to talk about this because showing you how to use Snagit actually takes five minutes if I speak really slowly. It's such an easy tool to use. And that's what I want to point out. Snagit is the easiest screenshot and screencasting tool to use and the quickest that I have ever seen. The workflow is exceptionally streamlined. You can take a screenshot or especially a screencast and get it online faster than with any tool I've ever seen and with less effort. And if you're making one or two in a day, that's not such a big deal. But let's say you're grading 50 papers and you're using Snagit to uh, give feedback to each of your 50 students. Every little extra mouse click and weight and bump in the workflow with products like Screencast-O-Matic or um, Zoom really adds up. I keep Snagit running. As you'll see, it runs in the background, when, or you can set it up so that it will always run in the background on your PC or your Mac so that it's available almost instantly. Yep. And you can, um, you can be recording within just a couple of seconds of making the decision to do so. It doesn't take much longer than it does for the impulse, nerve impulse to go from behind your forehead to your fingers. Just so you guys know, in the span of the 30 minutes maybe we've been online, I've probably taken 17 different Snagit images from the chat just for my own records. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no, I love to hear questions and pose them to people that may be better suited to answer them than I am, so that's why I capture it. Ah. And I have it mapped to my mouse. This is just a basic wireless mouse. You know how this roll scroll bar sometimes has a center button? Mine on my Windows machine, I click it and snag it up and it captures done. Ah. That's it. So. We're so excited. How do you do that? <laughs> I love that we're, we're about to see. Yeah. We're yeah. about to see. All right, let's, let's do the basics. Let's take a screenshot. Yay. We can take a screenshot of Jason. All right, well, tell me when so I can pose. Yeah. I'll pose <laughs> Sorry, dramatically. I got I got a um, unfull screen zoom so that I can get to my bar down here. There's a bunch of different ways you can set up Snagit to, to start it. I'm going to start with one of the more basic ones. If you have Snagit running and, and you tell it to start every time you boot the computer, on a Windows machine, it will always be down here in your system tray. Oh, wait a minute. Let me share my screen. Forgetting what I'm doing. Okay. It'll always be down here in your system tray. I can still get Jason. I'm just going to have to get a smaller version of him here. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice <laughs> if we could just do that with a snap of our fingers. There. Um, the snag, a little red S in my system tray is the Snagit recorder. I click that. Up it comes. Get Jason out of the way. That's for the folks here in the room. Y'all online can't see that. But you can now see the Snagit recorder. Yep. It's in so-called all-in-one mode. 
which means you get to just the and then that's a default. You get to decide at the time you make the capture whether it's going to be a screenshot, a static capture, or a screencast, a movie. Um, and starting the capture is pretty uh, simple. I don't think anybody would have any trouble with finding the big red button and hitting the big red button, and suddenly you get a, um, a, a crosshair and a little magnifier that show you exactly where the crosshair is. This allows you to select the portion of the screen that you want to take a picture of can be you can very quickly get the full screen just by clicking on the full screen button up here or you can click and drag in any portion of the screen just by going to the upper left hand corner and clicking and dragging down to the right you can also count and well, well let's just do the basic first so yeah I'm just gonna I'm going to leave out my um, Windows taskbar down there. Nobody needs to know anything about that. And click and let up. Now I get the Snagit control bar here at the bottom. And I can take either an image, a still screenshot, or a movie. Let's start with a movie, or with a screenshot, rather. <laughs> All right. In a moment, by default, I don't know if it's already open down here we'll get the so-called Snagit Editor. Okay? There is my Snagit. There is that screenshot that I took. Let me take some. And there's Jason, but you notice Jason not moving anymore. <laughs> Picture. A snapshot. Oh, there he is moving. All right, that's the that's the bar. Now, here's a picture of my screen. So while you're doing that, there was a question mm -hmm. that Joe came in with. Yes. I think it's apropos to hit. So he said, it seems, he says, it seems like an upgrade of Jing. Ah. So uh, for those who are not familiar, there was a product we put out in 2009 called Jing. Uh, most of you will, if you know it, it was the little sunshine. In fact, Dave's got it on his screen right now. Yeah, it's, it's up there. Um, so Jing was there. our exposure to what was a free screen capture tool. Um, Yes, it's an upgrade to Jing in the sense that all the images are uh, able to be annotated at a higher level, and all the videos that are created are not flash files, they are MP4 files. Um, it's, it's, I would say Snagit is a much more robust, full-featured version of Jing, and Jing has not been um, worked on in several years, so it's technology while still functioning. If you're going to share video with anyone, uh, your better bet is to use Snagit because of the MP4 capabilities, meaning anywhere, anyone you send a video to from Snagit should be able to be viewed on most any device that's modern, any current device, and even some older ones because MP4 is a ubiquitous playback format, whereas the flash file that, or AVI file that uh, Jing originally put out is not, especially if you have anyone consuming on a mobile device made by Apple. Flash does not work on an Apple device, mobile device, so iPhones and uh, iPads, MP4s work just fine. Good to know. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, when you bring up the Snagit Capture application, and hit capture and hit full screen you should see this little bar right here and that's a an image capture and the little camera icon will give you a video we'll see that in a minute Uh, you should. <laughs> we'll have to take a look and see what's happened on your machine there. But normally you will. Uh, the, we were trying to find the uh, uh, all-in-one capture bar that allows us to determine or to, distinct, to choose between taking a static screenshot and taking 
a um, a movie. So what's the difference between the all in one and the image or video here? Here, if you know in advance you're going to be taking an image, you get some the capability to set some parameters about how you capture that image. You can capture a full screen automatically every time, a window, whatever the active window is. You can do a scrolling window and you can select the type of scrolling window. We'll talk about a scrolling capture in a moment, a panoramic capture, or you can do some other acute things with it. Um, I I always describe the all-in-one tab uh, for people like me uh, that are indecisive. I know I need to capture something, right? and I can make a game-time decision as to whether or not it's going to be an image or video from that point on. Now, if you're making a whole series, like Dave tends to make a series of image captures, as Jeff probably does for what he's doing, Snagit, the current version, will remember your last capture type. So if you come in and click the red capture button as Dave does, it'll just remember your last capture settings. If you use the hotkey, which is defaulted on PCs as print screen, which Dave has over there on the right-hand side, so your print screen button on your keyboard, which can be changed by clicking in there and, and changing it to your own hotkey, um, it's trying to help you do repetitive process captures without having to pull up this capture window if you're just kind of right. in the flow of working on something, you don't have to go back in and reinvent the wheel every time. That's totally what it is. You, you need to click your all-in-one button first, then your capture and then your Right. It was thought you were trying to capture an image. It knew you were trying to capture an image. It thought. And you have a you have a video button as well, but like, as Jason said, I just keep mine in all in one because I never know what I'm going to need at any given time. It just depends on what a faculty member sends me an email and asks for. I may be able to explain it with a single screenshot, which is a lot easier for them, or I may need a video if it's a complex series of processes that they have to go through to accomplish something and say Blackboard. I'm going to use a video, and that all-in-one tab is gives you that option at the time that you decide the portion of the screen you're going to capture. Okay, um, so that's all there is to taking a screenshot. Let me bring up the editor again. This is a little. The screen's a little busy. Forgive me. Let me see, get that out of the way for the people here in the. Uh, room. Here's your Snagit editor. Let me full screen that. Here is the actual image that I've taken. And since my screen resolution is set fairly low to work with this projector, I can't see the entire image at one time. Now there's Jason who's not moving and will not move because he was on the screen time I took this screenshot. And so. then the Never see Jeff that still. I can <laughs> scroll around and see the entire image, even though I'm just looking at a win in a in an edit through a window here. Now, Dave, you know how to see the whole image, right? Uh, enlighten me. So this is something that uh, was real helpful to me when we made the upgrade to Snagit. At the very bottom of the screen there, above your tray, there's that 100% zoom option. Ah, yes. If you click on that, there's a button they added called Fit to Screen. Fit to Screen. Oh, I haven't seen that. Probably it should be saying, Jason, you're a moron, because when you click on that, you now can see the entirety of your image in the editor and make changes. That's that cool. That wasn't in Snagit 12. I'll be there. Nope, brand new. cool. All right. This is... Absolutely. So we have this image, and we could just send it, share it in any number of ways. And we'll talk about sharing here in a second. But let's see some of the things we can do with this image before we send it. Um, Snagit has tremendous image editing and enhancement capability. By default, what you can do is point out something. On, or the, it, the editor starts off in this mode. You can just move your cursor around and draw an arrow and point at something that you want to highlight. There's Jason. 
And if you look over here on the white, right in the so-called quick styles box, you can produce all sorts of different arrows. Double-headed arrows, single-headed arrows, arrows of different colors. Indeed, you can change the color here almost infinitely. Yep. And there's Jeff with a blue arrow. I can also draw boxes around things. Notice my little editor bar up here. There's the arrow. The arrows are the things you use most often from experience. Look here on your computer screen. You will see that button in Blackboard that will do what you want to do. But you can also, if you really want to highlight something, you can draw a box around it. Or a circle around it. Oops. Did I not change that? Listen to me, machine. You can draw There we go. A circle in whatever color I like. I can change the color of the outline. I can change the opacity of it. I can make it less opaque so that it's kind of translucent. I can change the thickness so it's a much thicker line and so on. So I can mark up this image in so many ways. I can type. Right on top of the image. And I can edit my typos. That's live text. There you go. I can add shadows and different colors and different text styles. Please. The text is the little A icon at the top. Just click on that and then move to the image and draw in a box. And it becomes a text box, that's correct. And then they could also do text width. Yeah, right there. Yeah. And you can move the text around. You can change the, you know, make the box bigger or smaller to change the wrap on the text and so on. And endless playing with it. You can create, you can use what are called call outs. This is something that uh, next week when we talk about Camtasia Studio, we'll see a lot more of. These are little um, graphic images that can be inserted into the, um, into the image or into a video in Camtasia Studio that can serve to call, uh, to call your attention to a particular part of the image or a part of the video. And many of them include the option to put text inside. Let's just pick a, uh, a, um, a voice balloon or a text balloon here. Move that around. Have it point to anything I want. I can even move a little arrow around. And then I can put text inside. <laughs> if I can type, and I can hide, I can select that text, and I can increase the the font size. Let's see. There we go. Except I missed the end. <laughs> That'll do. That'll have to do. Little N, I tell you what. I tell you. These I are can some. Move that around. I can use that to 
enhance the image. You can see all sorts of possibilities for that. Okay. Yes. Um, Oh yeah. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, what, probably what you're describing in terms of an instructor tutorial is going to be more of a screencast, a movie. Well, just do like one screen. So I mm -hmm. want to show my students how to use it. Will do. Will do. Oh, um, on a, on a paper, like usually in Blackboard, right. you use the comments section, the extra section. In Blackboard, you have a comments box where you can type Hi, comments about the, t about the paper. Yes. So this is like an alternative. Here and then you have Again, that's something you would probably, as, uh, giving students feedback on a paper is something you would probably do using a screencast sure. rather than a screen a screenshot like we're doing here. But I could, on the other hand, there are times when just a single image will, will do, and I'll show you one in a moment. And, and I think the example that I'm going to give is like in my digital management class, we do screen capture and screen capture the software. So right. let's say I'm showing like this from an instructor's standpoint, here's how, to, here's how to, here's the next step for this instructor um, guidance for, here's the next step. Right, video. exactly. And, and that's... Uh, software tutorials are one of the most, one of the classic applications of screencasting. And that's, um, and I don't want to spend too much more time on image editing here because I do want to get to screencasting. Yes, Tim? Well, okay, we'll get to screencasting as soon as all the subjects are going to be screencasting. Not, not so much in a screencast. Yeah. All of this editing that we're doing with the image on Snagit here is available when you're editing images, but not available when you're doing screencasting. Okay. But, but for, image, for that, you need yeah. Camtasia Studio or a comparable package. This image, though, one, one, one. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Dave? Yes, Jason. So, uh, sorry to interrupt again. I, I'm, Please. I'm, I'm that guy. Um, what I'm going to do for everyone here is I'm in the chat. I'm going to paste a screencast.com link that should be there live. Um, so, in, in tying in with what Dave's talking about, like Snagit itself is super basic, but the uses are endless. Right. So, I actually did a 10 plus few ways of using video in your classroom. Uh, ah, webinar. I did good. it for uh, the California State University system. Now, Cal State has a uh, um, system-wide license of our software, so everyone had access to it, and we're having conversations around what that looks like to help with the California Community College system. So that being said, um, I put a link to this webinar. It's one I did, I think, in March for, for the Cal State system. It is 58 minutes long. And I bet you a lot of it is the questions towards the end, but nearly every single video example that is given in that webinar can be done with Snagit. And I will tell you this right off the top, none of them are polished videos. There is no editing. There's no like music or perfect lighting. It's simply getting the content and the message delivered to the students or the coworkers or the staff or the faculty, whatever happens to be. Uh, in a very quick and easy way. So I, I put that out there. Feel free to watch it ad nauseum. <laughs> and a great way to get ideas on how to use screencasting. Dave, can I add something too? Please. Most of the what we've been looking at are you know screen captures that are kind of related more to the educational uh, area. Exactly. And when you're working, you know, it has several business applications too. Like for example, one of the have you any ever gone in and tried to capture a screen where the scroll in the website is so long that you you can't get all the text. So I really love the fact that that um, that. Snagit allows me to capture all the text, even though it's not showing on the right. screen. Right, and we're going we're to show a scrolling capture here in just a moment, as a matter oh. of fact. That's something I really want to get to. 
because okay. there are times when you can't fit everything you need on a single screen. Let me just show a couple more things in the editor here before we move yeah. on. We're not going to see everything in the editor today. You wouldn't remember it anyway because you look here under the More tab, you can crop, you can select parts of the image and move it. You can cut parts of the image out. Let's say, oops, I didn't realize that was on the screen. You can cut it out so that it doesn't show. You can draw over it freehand with a pen. You can draw a line. You can highlight. Uh, I love the steps. I have to show that. You just start clicking, and it gives you the steps and a process. So on the screen, first click here, then click here, then click there, then click. I love that one. Um, you can, if you decide you don't need it, you can erase parts of the image. Hmm. Oops, didn't mean to have that. No, I shouldn't have erased Snagit. Gee, getting a little erase happy. Oh my Out of control. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. Let's say there's something in there you really don't want to, people to see. Uh, undo. Edit, undo. Edit, undo. <laughs> so you do, that's a good point. If you erase the wrong thing, you can, uh, if you do the wrong thing, you can back up a step at a time, almost unlimited. Um, I love blur. If there's something in there you really don't want people to see, you can blur it out. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. <laughs> um, the, uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, so, like, if you type somebody's name or password or something in there, or if the, you capture somebody's name and you don't want that to be part of the record, you can blur it out. Yes, ma'am. No. Right. I'll be darned. The the blur tool is the thing that switched you from Jing to Snagit. <laughs> There's a little bit of feedback for the design team, Jason. They love the blur. We. Uh, I tell you what. It's an underutilized tool. Uh, I would say the inverse of that as an underutilized tool is a spotlight tool that allows you to, you know, darken everything else. But, uh, yeah, I agree. I used it. So for those who don't know, I'm a former educator myself, six years in the classroom. Um, when I was showing spreadsheets of data, just blurring out the names alone, just to, it was a powerful enough tool that that was enough for me with Snagit originally. So I, I agree. Blur is a fabulous tool. <laughs> And maybe my favorite, let's say you really want to uh, call attention to something. The magnifier. A little magnifying glass that you can move around. So um, you can just go wild with this. You can go absolutely too wild with it and make your image almost impossible to interpret, like this one. But with a little judicious use, it's terrific. Okay, let's do another capture here. Let me get the Snagit editor out of the way. Please. Jason? I, uh, Dave, I actually can't hear them. If you can relay the oh, question. I'm sorry, the spot, uh, sorry about that. The spotlight tool. Where was that? So the spotlight tool, and I may have overspoke myself working both in Snagit and Camtasia. Um, yeah, I probably overspoke myself. Um, yeah, that, that one I can't remember in the Snagit. Yeah, nope. So... There's a way to do that. It, you know, you can use a combination of the magnify tool, which is new, where you can actually just draw attention with the magnify tool and have that be a section that you want people to view. Um, you could blur everything else in magnify tool. So I, I apologize. I misspoke. The yeah. spotlight tool is definitely in Camtasia. Forgiven. 
Grazie. Yeah, they've, they've so replaced that with a magnify tool, right? But the, yeah. it is still in Camtasia Studio. Yes, ma'am. Ah! Effects? No, no, no. Oh, I'm talking Spotlight and Magnify. Spotlight and Magnify. Yep. There it is. <laughs> nope, that's right. That's 100% it. Good job. So, can I, Dave, I don't know if yeah. you were going to talk about the customization of Snagit. Um, yes. If, I was going to say, if you wanted to, or I could show them, it depends on how you want to do it, because if that's an important tool, there's a way to make it part of your toolbar, and I can show yes, that indeed. if you want. Yeah, you can, under More, at the bottom of the More menu, there's a Customize Toolbar option, and you can make something a default part of your toolbar so that it always shows up on the screen. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that right now because we're uh, in danger of running out of time on screencasting. But that is a possibility. So those are all wonderful things that you can do with your image, and I encourage you to play with that um, menu with all those editing tools to see how they can work for you. Right. No, no, they're going to be different quick styles because they're different tools. Like, can you uh, combine the arrow, the quick styles for the arrow and the box and things like that? It was the question, and not really, I don't think. But you can have them right under your cursor here in the edit bar at the top. Okay, we um, just took a simple capture here. But let me bring up something else here. See if I can find a web browser. There we go. Come on. Too many things going on at once. And we'll bring up a new tab. And I'm going to go to the Blackboard login screen. Again, I've got my um, Resolution set fairly low here, so I can't get this entire screen at one time. If I wanted to take a picture of the entire Blackboard login screen, can't do that by just drawing in uh, the existing screen because it's uh, uh, it's <laughs> flapping off the bottom of the screen. But if I let's see, bring up Snagit and go to Capture and tell it, instead, or in, rather, instead of just drawing in, I can use this little demented bouncing arrow here at the bottom. Um, and if this page were also too wide to fit, there would be two more arrows. There would be one pointing down to the right and one pointing to the right. So I can capture images that are both too wide and too deep to capture in a, on a single screen, or both. But let's just take the simple result here. Let's just click the down arrow, and it's going to scroll this screen and process the capture. And if I use the new trick that I learned today, <laughs> and it didn't scroll. That's interesting. Yeah, I think you waited too long. Did I not tell it? Let's try that again. I think you waited too long, Dave. Let's see. That's possible. Okay, capture. Scrolling. Please wait. I shouldn't have to do anything, right, Jason? Ah, there we go. I don't know why that didn't happen the first time. Too many things running on the machine. If the, that or if the page is uh, coded as an infinitely scrolling page, it may not know where to stop. That's where the panoramic capture 
comes in. Ah, uh, yeah, we're going to show that too. <laughs> um, but there it worked that time. Don't know what uh, why it got its knickers in a knot the first time. But there's the full Blackboard login screen, including the system announcement in red that keeps us from getting a lot of phone calls and. Um, emails from students. So that's all there is to a scrolling capture. As John, uh, um, Jason mentioned, it's also possible, let's say you don't want the entire page, but you want a part of it. You can manually control this with a so-called panoramic capture. That's one, that's a brand new feature in Snagit 13. Scrolling's been around for a bit, but the panoramic capture is wonderful. Let's just go to image and do a panoramic capture. And I love it. They use the tool to show you how to use the tool. The first time you try to do a panoramic capture, it shows you how to do it. Because this is a new feature. It's something that your people might not have seen before. This is what's called an animated GIF, right, Jason? This is, it does this before you capture. Yeah, the first time you do it. Okay, but now I can just draw in the screen here again that I'm going to, the window that I'm gonna capture and I just start the panoramic capture, and now I get to control what happens. I can just roll, scroll this down while I just did, and I'll get the and it quit. Okay, let's do that again. Stop. Okay, we probably got a couple of copies of it there. No, nope, it worked. But I, that was me twitching. I accidentally got the whole thing again instead of the, just a portion of it. But I could have stopped that panoramic capture at any point. So you can capture just a portion of a scrolling screen and you can control exactly what gets captured, and you can even con uh, capture irregular portions of your screen. They don't have to be rectangular in shape. So, nice new tool. Now, this is all wonderful. You can do all these wonderful captures and wonderful um, uh, edits on your uh, image, but it's no good if you can't get it to someone, right? Well, that's where sharing comes in. And the simplest way to share your image is simply to go to the file menu in Snagit and save the image as a, uh, uh, a ping, a network graphic. Uh, I can just call this sample one and save it, and now it's in my pictures folder on my hard drive. I can attach it to an email. I can uh, and send it to people, or I can have it available in my pictures folder to use with other programs, like Word or whatever, Photoshop, anything I like. Um, that's the basic, most basic form of sharing, but you can do a lot more. Jeff out of the way there. Um, <laughs> here's the file share. It's the same thing I, as I just did. You can FTP this to an FTP server somewhere on the internet. You can drop it on your clipboard so that you can paste it into another application. You can send it right away to Word. And let me just illustrate that. If I click Word, it's going to start Word for me. And there it is. There's a Word document with that image in it. Just that quick. And once it's in Word, I can I can change the size. I can rotate all the usual stuff you can do in Word. 
It's under share, yeah. It's one of the options under share, and there are quite a few. Um, you can send it to um, PowerPoint as well. That's probably even more useful. Yep. <clears throat> if you're making a PowerPoint presentation, you need a bunch of screenshots for your PowerPoint presentation, you can just send them over just one after another as you create them. Yep. If you have a PowerPoint open, it'll populate that current PowerPoint wherever your cursor is. If you yep. don't have one open, it'll generate a brand new project for you. Same with Word. Right. So it, it is, this is part of that streamlined workflow. There's no faster way to get images into Word or PowerPoint than using Snagit. So. Uh, and that would be the same on the Mac, Jason? Yep. It, if You have to have the product installed, of course. You'd have to have PowerPoint installed for it to be able to share to PowerPoint. Hmm. And this is Snagit 13 that you have? Snagit 3 right now. Snagit 4. 4. Sorry. Snagit 4. Mm -hmm. hmm. And under share, those are those options. So those options are not show, showing up under share, and you do have Word installed on the machine. Hmm. So what you can do is at the bottom of that share menu, there's a more Snagit outputs option. Ah, uh, that's probably it. <laughs> so we, um, a big part of it is we didn't want to clutter everyone's Snagit with things they didn't need. So you do have the ability to click on the more outputs, oh. and you can add outputs on the left there. If you click the plus, right. there's Word and, Out, and Outlook, or Outlook, PowerPoint, all that. You can add them in and then they will become part of your, um, your part of your shared destinations after that. Okay, that seems to have fixed that. Sure. What is the most friendly way to share a video? Uh, we're about to do that. Very good. Yeah, we don't want to wait any longer to get the screen casting. There are Lots more bells and whistles as far as image editing and image uh, management in uh, Snagit, and I encourage you to play with those. There are endless tutorials on Snagit on the uh, TechSmith website at TechSmith.com. And, of course, I'll always be happy to answer any questions that you have, even if I have to go and ask Jason <laughs> for the answer before I get back to you. So, let's... Uh, drop out of the Snagit editor here for a moment and go and talk about the other thing you can do with Snagit, which in many ways is simpler because you don't have as many options as you do with image editing in Snagit, but in many ways it's even more powerful. And that is screencasting or uh, taking a screen movie with Snagit. I'm just going to stay with the all-in-one tab here. And oh, by the way, there's also an option in Snagit to uh, activate, and I think, let me see if I can get this out of the way so I can get to it, to activate the so-called uh, one-click which is a little uh, presence of Snagit, which typically sits on the right at the top of your screen. You can just see it as a little blue line here, right at the top. And if you tickle it, it drops down. This is very reminiscent of Jing, for those of you who use Jing. That you set up in your Snagit preferences, Uh, move the couple of bars around for the folks here locally. And that's going to be under Capture Preferences, under the File menu, and it's Show One Click. That's something that, yeah, that, my copy at least came with that turned off. So I had to turn it on. 
So under capture preferences, you can get this, and that's just a much quicker way of getting to snag it. And it's always there. It's over top of just about anything else that's on your screen. So you don't have to bring up this Snagit uh, uh, tool window here, the Snagit capture window. It's just always handy. So I'm going to, um, yes? Oh, you mean uh, having Snagit running automatically when the operating system boots? If you have if you have one click selected, and you have Snagit set to load when the computer boots, yes, this will appear at the top of the screen automatically. And I believe having Snagit load at startup is the default. Is that right, Jason? That is correct. Um, right. And it is correct that one click is turned off by default on the new version, mm -hmm. mainly to expose the other tools that were available in that new capture window. But uh, <laughs> it's the phrase, you know, there's many ways to skin a cat, so you can launch it from the shortcut, from the capture window, or from one click. We wanted to make sure that we reached anybody and everybody and how they wanted to start their captures. Gotcha. We didn't want to be presumptuous. It was an instructional uh, opportunity there. But the vast majority of the time, you will probably want the one-click active, and you will certainly want it to run at startup, because Snagit, sitting there running in the background, consumes almost no resources on the machine. It will not interfere with anything else you're doing. And it's available instantly. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's that's very much Jing-ish. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> Jason just uh, J, uh, Julie and Jason Julie just said she really likes the one click. Yeah, if you're if you're an existing Jing user, there is no that's exact same behavior, um, and that's why we kept it because that's so for some people it's handy. It's always there. You can move it around. It doesn't have to live at the top. I have my Mac one sitting on my left, and my Windows one is sitting on my right, just so I know where they are. No, I'm glad to hear that. Thanks so much. How do you move the little uh, one click? Just drag it. You can put it anywhere. Ah. Okay, so let's take a screencast. This is so simple. You get whatever you want to capture on the screen. I've got a little bit of a busy screen here because we're doing Zoom at the same time. But let's say I just wanted to show someone how to log into Blackboard. And here we're addressing those instructor tutorials that you were asking about before. I didn't forget you. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to record this uh, window with Jason in it. Smile, Jason, just in case. <laughs> okay, so I go up here and I can uh, bring up that, I can get this darn bar out of the way, I can bring the my cursor up. I'm in all-in-one mode, so it's going to ask me in a minute what I want to do. Again, I'm not going to get my task bar down there, that's just distracting. And I'm going to tell it this time, instead of just taking a screenshot, I'm going to take a video. It counts me down. And now I'm recording. I can record my screen, or you see the little uh, box down here in the lower right? There's Jason. But I'm not talking on purpose, but me now. Instead of Jason, I want to see me. In Snagit 13, I can record my webcam. See this little box down here in the lower right-hand corner? I can switch back and forth anytime I want between my webcam and my screen. It may not... I'm, do you have a webcam in that machine? Yeah. I don't know. It should be finding it. We can we can check 
and see. But yeah, so back and forth, no problems. That can be very engaging. In my case, uh, just a little bit of it is plenty. But now I'm uh, I'm recording everything that goes on on the screen, so I've I can tell people that well, you know, you can get the blackboard at sdccd.blackboard.com, our Blackboard system. To log in, all you have to do is enter your username, which will be your CSID. Seven-digit student ID number or faculty ID number, as the case may be. And here's where we see if I know the password to this one. Then you type in your password. And if you get lucky and you remember the password, here you are in Blackboard. And I can now proceed to show them how to get from the, my institution screen they could, that they get into when they first log into Blackboard to their courses just by clicking on the link to my, a particular course in the My Courses box. And here's a typical Blackboard course, and I can proceed to show a student or a faculty member how to navigate through Blackboard, how to create or to um, operate Blackboard, an exceptionally complex piece of software. But if you can show someone how to do it, anyone can do it. Trying to describe to them verbally or in text how to do something will take you five times as long to create and be one-tenth as effective. And there's just nothing to it. When I'm done with my screencast, I can stop it in a number of ways. There's a pause button down here. So I can stop and catch my this doesn't end the recording, it just stops the recording for a second so you can catch your breath and maybe think, oh God, what was I going to do next? Or how do you do that? <laughs> I've got to run over to another computer over here and figure out what I mean to say. And then you can just start again. Now we're recording again. Yes, ma'am. No, you, you can't have both at the same time. And if you think about it, that having both on the screen at the same time can be very distracting. If you want people to concentrate on something that's going on on the screen, having them watching you instead, looking down in the lower right-hand corner and finding you, can distract from what you're trying to say. On the other hand, if you're, try, if you're expounding on something like I am right now, and what's on the screen is not that important, well, they're going to be looking at the screen instead of you. I, this is a design decision on TechSmith's part, and I happen to like it. I'd much rather have one or the other, but not both at the same time. And when you do have your webcam up, the image is big enough to really see. So maybe if you weren't just showing a talking head of yourself, um, you could be using your webcam there are lots of different kinds of webcams. You could be using your webcam to, say, show a piece of paper or uh, a physical object that you wanted them to look at. And you, you need that full screen. Now, to be fair, in Screencast-O-Matic, you can switch back and forth. Mm -hmm. But I like this design decision. Yes? So how about if we want to... Um, take our students to a website. Right. And so, um, and so we can be talking. Mm -hmm. and Give me a for instance, if you would. Um, or you just want a website address? Any website. Okay. Um, Hilton.com. www.hilton.com. Bingo. Okay. Bot bottom line, if it's on your screen, it's being captured. Exactly. Anything that appears on your screen gets captured. 
as well as if you toggle on what's called the system audio. That means any sounds mm. that would normally come through your speakers are also being captured. Indeed. So, for instance, if you were on a, uh, I use a Creative Commons website to find free audio sources for my Camtasia videos. I record them with Snagit to show people to give them a, a get an opinion on them. As long as I have that system audio turned on, it also captures that audio. Yeah, I don't think I turned it on. If I had, this the Snagit recording would have caught Jason talking. True. Uh, yeah, as soon as we stop the, I have to, I'll have to stop this capture first, but yes. I have a question about the capture. Yes, ma'am. So, question about the capture. Yeah. So as long as you're watching it, mm -hmm. this will be really useful to me. Then she can just give directions and continue the video. Correct. Mm -hmm. You can keep, you can do this as long as you need to. Snagit has no time limit. And whatever you see on the screen, mm -hmm. they see. And they hear whatever you say, and if you have the system audio on, as Jason described, they will hear anything that comes through the computer. You can play a video, and it will record the video playing and the audio from the video. And then you can talk over it. Say. So, um, not in live time, but let's say I want to record myself going to this site and showing how easy it is Use How easy it is to use Hilton.com is perfect. It's a perfect application. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I can go through the website, and you can show them everything about how to use that website. And then I can insert this as like a resource in my Blackboard. You can. Yep. Then you can link this into Blackboard exactly. So the way I always use, else? the way I always use Snagit video is um, two ways. One is for temporary knowledge, something that's going to be a one-off. Like if I'm showing Dave how to do something, I'm going to make a quick video and snag it and send it to him. Or if I want to create a library of resources for my students, uh, this is the kind of thing I would walk through and have as a permanent uh, fixture. Um, I tend to use Snagit for audiences that I uh, already familiar with because I don't need the polish of say like a Camtasia, uh, but it allows for something that's, you know, the rewatchability of videos is important. The fact that they can pause it is important. The fact that they can rewind you because they can't do that in a live class experience is also important. So, yeah. And I will say that I, I have made thousands of screencasts over the years. Over the last several years since Snagit 11 came out with video capability, I have done the vast majority of them in Snagit and not Camtasia. If I feel later that it needs more polish and some editing, more likely if it needs captioning locally, I can then send it to Camtasia automatically. I'll show you how to do that when we, I'll show you the, the share options here in a moment. but. Um, the vast majority of the time, the Snagit, for me, the Snagit capture is perfectly adequate. And I, my mantra is get it out there as quickly as possible so the students have it when they need it or the faculty have it when they need it. It doesn't have to be uh, Gray's Anatomy to be useful. Man. My, my, I think you kind of hit on my question. How, in, how do we make any of this with closed captioning? Okay. That's, that comes with, uh, Snagit has no organic captioning capability, but it doesn't need it. The question is how do you get these captions, of course. And, and tell me why it doesn't need it. Because one of the, let's stop this video. I think we've made a point on how to record a video, right? Stopping it permanently can be done in a couple of ways. You can pause it and then hit the stop button here. So I just use the pause button and then once it paused, a the control bar popped up and I had a stop option. Or I can hit shift F10 on the keyboard, on a PC keyboard anyway. And that stops the video recording. And it gives me, it opens up the Snagit editor and it gives me the 
a preview of the video, which I can take a look at to make sure it looks and sounds okay. And the irony of that thing is, Dave, that's an active MP4 ready to go. No more encoding is needed. It's ready to be shared right away. Okay, this is the recording. <laughs> Okay, so it, it recorded fine. Hey, there's the video. We can scrub through the whole thing just to get a quick look at what we did just by clicking and dragging this edit cursor here. If there are parts of it that I don't need, I can select them by using the little ears, the little in and out points, the little squares on either side of the edit cursor to select a portion of the video and I can then cut that out. And I can even do that now. Oops. In the middle of the video. Used to be in Snagit I could only trim the ends of the clip. Now I can cut out chunks of the middle. So when things go off the rails and you need to start something over, you can cut out the portion that wasn't right. Um, that's, a, the type, that's a type of feature that used to be available only in a video editor like Camtasia Studio which, by the way, we're going to be covering in this room, or actually down the hall, next week. But we had another question. So, can, you know how in um, other video recordings, they'll highlight the cursor, so it's purple, so I noticed when I recorded my cursor, Jason, do we have, I don't think we have cursor effects like the ones that you have in Camtasia in Correct. Snag. Nope, Snagit is a bare bones. You see is what you get, down and dirty, basic screen recording tool. So if you need any editing capabilities outside of the trim and cut that what Dave just showed, uh, you need a video editor like, like Camtasia. And for that, please come see us next Friday. But, yeah. okay, we have, so we have the, um, let me get this bar out of the way again. We have a video. And we had with almost no effort. All you have to do is start it recording and start talking and start showing things. And anything that appears on the screen is recorded along with your voice. If you think about it, that's an incredibly powerful tool. If you do something in Snagit and you then decide I need more and Let's see what we can do in answer to your question. Once you've recorded something in Snagit, you decide it needs some polishing or some editing, is there anything you can do? You bet. Yeah. Going to come back to that one in a moment, if we may. Um, because we really need to show people. And I'll be happy to stay here and answer questions as long as you wish but I know some people probably have places to be and we are right at the end of our time. I want to make sure you see the share. Um, let me get Jason out of the middle of it there. Um, these are all places that you can send this video with pretty much a single click. If it needs more editing, you can just send it to Camtasia Studio if you have Camtasia Studio on your PC. It will appear in the clip bin in Camtasia Studio ready to go. You don't, so is that streamlined workflow again. And this is how I do it. When I do something and I know I'm going to work on in Camtasia, I usually record it with Snagit and then use this option to send it right to Camtasia Studio because it's quicker than using the recorder in Camtasia. And all I have to do is click at the top of the screen, click the big red button, and I'm recording. I don't have to start Camtasia Studio. It's, this is always running. I can send it to Dropbox. I can send it to screencast.com, which is TechSmith's wonderful hosting site. 
They'll give you some hosting space and bandwidth for free. You can buy more for $10 a month. I've been paying for it for years, and it's outstanding, particularly for screencast uh, videos. Uh, we have a TechSmith Relay system here. You can send it straight to TechSmith Relay for captioning and publishing. You can send it to Google Drive, and there are other options that are I do not have on here because they don't apply to our environment. But by far, the most commonly used option here with a video is YouTube. To send this video to YouTube, I click that option. Snag it's saving the capture, as you can see. And it asks me, what do I want to call this? The default is just to have it uh, have a time stamp, time and date stamp, but I can. Seminar example, indeed we're doing fine until I have to type. Seminar example, I have to give it a description. What's today? Um, 7-15-16. Uh, That's enough. I have to give it at least one tag. <coughs> I can decide what I want to bring back to the clipboard. I can either bring the just the link, the YouTube link, or the full embed code if I'm embedding it in the Blackboard. Um, I definitely want it to be high definition. And I can set my privacy level in YouTube, public, private, unlisted. And then, bang. And it starts uploading. That's all you got to do. And that last bit is due to YouTube, not due to Snake. YouTube won't let you put the video up there unless you put a name on it and so on. But this is all there is to putting it online so people can view it anywhere in the world. And what's the one of the within? What's going to happen on YouTube within an hour or so once that video uploads? <laughs> This one, maybe not. <laughs> not going viral, I'm afraid. It's going to caption it. YouTube has a demon that runs through every new video that's uploaded, gets captioned. It runs voice recognition on the soundtrack, produces a transcript, parses the transcript into one to two line segments, and synchronizes them with a the video automatically. How do they do that? I'll invoke Clark's first law. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. It's magic. That's how it happens. The captions will not be perfect. I can guarantee you that. Though they will, if you speak with a reasonable pace and as much as possible in complete sentences and use a decent microphone in a fairly quiet environment, you will be amazed at how accurate those captions can be. But they will not be perfect no matter what. But YouTube, and this is beyond the scope of this presentation, we do that seminar periodically as well, but YouTube has a beautiful caption editor built into it. If the video is yours, if you uploaded it, you can go in and you can edit those captions for accuracy very easily. Notice I said easily, not quickly, but easily. It takes time. There's no royal road to caption it. But um, YouTube makes it about as easy as it's ever going to be. So the fact that Snagit doesn't have organic captioning tools built into it it's pretty much immaterial as long as you're going to put the movie onto YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So, to me, the EPSS requirements are different. Um, 
Yes. Is this one of the quickest ways to get a video online with closed captioning? Yes. Yes. It is absolutely the quickest way I know. Mm -hmm. Now, when video, I mean a screencast, a screencast, the, um, if you want to caption an actual video, a motion video, you're going to, if you're editing it, you'll probably edit it in a package like Camtasia Studio, and which can also publish to YouTube. But once it's on YouTube, it will also get captioned, and you can go in and edit the captions. But that workflow, create, upload to YouTube, wait for the automatic captions to appear, and then edit them, is absolutely the quickest, easiest, and most streamlined workflow for getting captioned video online that there is. We will see Camtasia Studio next week, which has organic captioning tools built in. And they are very good. And for your voice, they're actually better than YouTube <laughs> once you train them. Yep. That's how I caption my videos. I do it in Camtasia Studio and then upload it to YouTube after it's captioned. But I don't have to do that. If I don't have Camtasia Studio, if I only have Snagit, you can just upload it to YouTube and it will get captioned and you can edit the captions and you are good to go. So that is not an impediment for you. Yes, ma'am. If you upload something to YouTube, it goes into your so-called channel, your video channel. Thank you all for coming. We are, we have covered everything just about. I will continue to answer questions as long as you have them. But thanks so much for everybody who attended today. I can't believe we had this many people show up uh, just, what, Jason, three weeks after we did this? Yeah, yep. This is wonderful. Maybe we need to do it again in about three weeks. Uh, <laughs> I, am, uh, I am very gratified, and uh, I please get in touch with me when you have more questions. I think everybody knows how to get in touch with me. If not, ask. I'll certainly let you know and I will look forward to hearing from you. And I believe we had a question in the back here, somebody who's getting up to move. Uh, is Jing disappearing? Why? Well, I can't really answer that. I've seen no indications of it. Uh, I, can, I can answer it. Thank you. No. Uh, we, <laughs> That's uh, what we wanted to hear. There are there, we discontinued Jing Pro a few years ago um, when we started doing more active development inside of Snagit itself. Jing itself, I have seen no plans for it to go away. That doesn't mean it won't at some point. Um, I strongly encourage you to switch to Snagit because <laughs> of the ubiquitous playback functionality and everything else you get with it. Uh, but I understand the the love and attachment to Jing. I, I do I do understand. Fred. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we do have a, a system, a server-based screencasting system called Camtasia Relay that we also offer uh, seminars on. And it has organic captioning tools built in, and it has probably the best caption editor in existence in it. So that's another option. Right. Well, you only need the server name for Camtasia Relay when you're downloading the recorder client and so on, or checking on your the progress of your work. Otherwise, Camtasia Relay operates locally from your computer through the Camtasia Relay con uh, recorder client. No, you, d you just have to, in order to upload video from Camtasia Relay to the Camtasia, uh, from the, your computer to the Camtasia Relay server, you have to be on the internet. 
but you can do the recording without even without being on the internet and your computer will automatically start sending the video up to Camtasia Relay the next time you connect it to the internet. That's an entirely separate system. It's another great um, entry level screencasting system that we have here at the district and it is completely free to you all. But I will be honest with you, I said it one, before, I'll say it again. I do several screencasts a day, most days, answering questions for faculty and students. And 95% of the time, I use Snagit. And it cost me 30 bucks. I bought my own copy long ago <laughs> and have updated it continuously. I think I have two or three Snagit licenses for my personal use. Next week, Next week, same time, I am planning on doing this down in our, uh, the, doing the Camtasia Studio uh, <coughs> session down in our W222 lab, but if we end up with too many people, we'll move down here. That would be a wonderful problem to have. I hope we do. Okay, uh, we have someone who's having trouble sharing from Snagit on a Mac to Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, Jason, that was the question. I mean, it, it looks like it should. It's on the share menu, but it, when uh, she clicks on the button to share and uh, a um, an image, it's not ending up there for some reason. And she, and she has Mac, Word, or PowerPoint installed, correct? Yes. She does. And it's not the, you're not trying to send to the Office 365 online version, correct? Correct. Okay, it's a locally installed version, not Office 365. Okay. Um, well, what I would recommend at that point, because because unfortunately I can't see your machine, um, if you actually contact tech support at TechSmith, which we're all based in Michigan, you call or get online to tech support, uh, you go right to us here uh, in Michigan. The website is, is pretty easy. It's just support.techsmith.com, and that would be my starting point. You can either search for the issue that you have or there's a blue uh, button halfway down on the left that says submit a ticket. And those guys, probably a gentleman by the name of either Mike Spink or Nate Gray, will be back with you very shortly. And we'll get that figured out. And there, maybe there's just something that needs to be cleared off your system and reset, but uh, that's something they can easily help you with. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, using Blackboard. Classroom. Using Blackboard, okay. And, um, at the end of the semester, it shuts off, right? And I have to resubmit to have another semester. You can only use a shell in Blackboard for one semester because the shells are key to the CRN of the section in, in the student information system. And that's how we get the students in there and you in there. So if I build up my Blackboard, with some right. Oh, no, 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 no. If you develop your Blackboard shell and maybe put a bunch of Snagit videos okay. into it, no, that's not going anywhere. It will still be available to you indefinitely okay. until we remove it from the system. And we haven't done that in about three years. So we're trying to get some historical data on there. So you'll have access to that Blackboard shell forever. And at the when you get a new blank shell for the next semester, you can copy all of that content in about 30 seconds from your old shell into your new one. You do not have to do anything over. And your Snagit videos will not be in Blackboard anyway. They'll be on YouTube or on screencast.com or wherever. And, and, that'll show up. but that'll all show up. If you have it set up in the original shell, it'll transfer to the new shell. There are some things you have to update, but by and large, your work, you do not have to do anything twice. Okay, good question. Oh, this has been such a great session. Keep the questions coming. I, Jason, I can't thank you enough. I know you may 
please feel free to stay right through the whole thing. But just in oh, case I, you have to leave, I, I appreciate that. It's I appreciate this. Sure, my pleasure. Uh, no, I actually have to head out to another meeting here. It's almost two o'clock local time. So thank yeah. you for the opportunity. Thanks for the questions and conversations. And like Dave said, if thanks, thanks Jason. You're welcome. Good experience. Thank you. You bet. Enjoy your day, everyone. You were great. Thanks. Love your microphone too. Well, well I'm still answering questions. I'm going to keep. See. I'll stay at this until as long as y'all have questions. And we're still recording. Yes. Oh, yeah. Evan. Okay, the question is, because I know these microphones are not really picking up the audience, uh, the question is, what if I had a, in a science class, I had a student lab report. It was turned in on paper, and I wanted to... Um, give the student feedback on that and mark it up. You could indeed scan it, as you said, scan the PDF to, or scan the paper to a PDF image, bring that up on your screen and talk about it while uh, recording that with Snag. Can you mark things up? Well, not using tools in Snagit. Snagit, the video recording in Snagit doesn't have any built-in um, uh, markup tools, but uh, there are third-party tools that you can run at the same time that you're running Snagit that will allow you to do just what you described, to circle portions of it, to draw pictures, draw arrows, highlight portions for, uh, uh, for later use. Indeed, if you're just highlighting things, you can just use the uh, you, know, you can do that in Acrobat Reader as you have the document up, uh, the PDF up. You can highlight portions of it, but there are markup tools that you can use that are not part of Snagit. What if I did it Snagit and shared it That's the other possibility. Yes, indeed, you can make, you can record the image of the uh, lab report and your narration in Snagit drop it into Camtasia Studio and put all sorts of call-outs and markup tools, markups, arrows, things like that in it um, using post-production, after the recording, where you don't have to, you know, do it while you're talking, which, you know, walking, chewing gum, and rubbing your stomach at the same time. Occasionally, you're going to drop one of them. But, um, yes, you can do that. You can do that in post-production Camtasia Studio. And again, next week, same time, 9 a.m., that's July 22nd, we will look at Camtasia Studio. And I'm getting this feeling I may, we may be back down here. I planned on, I figured we'd have a smaller audience for that, so we'd just do it down in our production lab down the hall. But we'll see. We'll, we'll not send anybody home because we don't have room. Yes, a couple of weeks, uh, three, four weeks ago now, Jason was physically here. We were lucky enough to have him come and, uh, and work with us live. And, yeah, the people who attended that meeting got free licenses for Snagit and Camtasia Studio. Uh, sorry, I, I, that's... Uh, and Jason's no longer with us, so uh, that was probably a one-time Oprah moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't commit Jason to that. You can, uh, it's j.valad at techsmith.com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was pretty specific, I will tell you, that uh, that was a one-time deal, because obviously they're in business to sell software, and it is 
unbelievably inexpensive for what it does. The Windows version of Camtasia is, right now is $179, and it will do uh, most of what you can do with incredibly expensive and complex packages like Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. It'll do it. It does everything I need to do in the terms of video editing and animation and um, video enhancement and so on for a tiny fraction of the price of more expensive products. And uh, the Mac version of Camtasia right now is $75. It's slightly less powerful, but not that much less powerful than Camtasia Studio for the PC. And it's 75 bucks for educators. Ma'am. Yeah, right. Uh, indeed. Thank you. Uh, that session that where Jason was here physically was recorded, and that is available on our. Let me share my screen here. That is available on our on-demand video site. That zoom bar is supposed to go out of the way. Ah, there, finally it did. Thank you. I just had to ask. Uh, it's at sdccdolvid.org. S-D-C-C-D-O-L-V-I-D, onlinevideo.org. And it's under our workshop archives. And I just posted it, so it's probably the first one. There he is, TechSmith Demo Day, June 23rd. That's about, that's close to three hours of video. <laughs> but you can fast forward through it. And that covers a lot more about Camtasia Studio than I've said today. That we will be doing that next week. Uh, and it showed Snagit. Showed most of what I showed you today in Snagit as well. Snagit's the first part of it. But there's also a great section on Camtasia Studio. What's not in there is the part where he gave everybody a free license. And he also showed us, he gave us a, a beta preview of the new Camtasia, which is coming out maybe later this year, maybe early next year. Uh, they're doing a major upgrade uh, soon. So um, that was cool. But we couldn't, we couldn't record that and put that online because uh, that's covered under a non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> we can't show that yet. Yes, Tad? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, it does. There's not 100% feature parity quite, but it is almost the same. Or, you know what I meant to ask? I meant to ask Camtasia. Camtasia for Mac. Yeah, Camtasia for Mac right now has uh, lacks some major chunks of the uh, Camtasia Studio for the PC. But uh, I think it's I think it's public knowledge that they're working to bring them closer together in terms of uh, feature parity. Thanks so much for coming, Dan. Um, so, but right now there's a significant. On the other hand, there are things that Camtasia Mac will do that Camtasia Studio for the PC won't. Uh, and in fact, the the major upgrade to the editor. Uh, that happened in the last version of both of these packages happened in Camtasia Mac first. It was available for about six, eight months before the one uh, for the PC version was. But uh, major, major things that are not in Camtasia Mac relative to Camtasia Studio for the PC are uh, voice recognition captioning and quizzing are not in Camtasia Mac. 
but and some of the call outs aren't in there some of the visual effects aren't in there as well but there's, it's still a wonderfully full-featured package. I mean, there's no reason not to get it for 75 bucks. But could you not kind of carrying on what you were saying earlier? It's supported um, in Camtasia, but it's not supported in Photoshop. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. The, the lack of organic captioning tools in Camtasia Mac is not that big of an impediment because you just upload it to YouTube and do the captioning there. Quite frankly, that's what most people do, even with Camtasia Studio. Camtasia Studio, on the other hand, works with the voice recognition built into Windows, and you can train that voice recognition in Windows by reading to it, reading pre-prepared packages to it, and um, you spend an hour or two reading to it, it gets scary good. As, and in it, um, uh, it gets good enough that the accuracy is probably above 90%. So when I do something on my office, when I create a screencast on my office PC, I either record it in Camtasia Studio or more often record it and snag it and then drop it into Camtasia Studio with that share button that I showed you and then do the captioning in Camtasia Studio. I have Camtasia Studio do the voice recognition, those voice recognition, parsing and synchronizing automatically within seconds usually. And then it gives me the captions in a, in a, in a window and I can go from caption to caption and I, editing changes. But mainly what I have to do is add capital letters and periods and commas because it doesn't do punctuation. It doesn't, it can't recognize the beginning and the end of a sentence usually. So I, I have to add that in, but I don't have to type many words. So that's how I do my captioning. You don't, you don't do it. No. I, it's faster for me to do it through uh, Camtasia Studio. Studio. Can I ask you back again? Uh, I Absolutely. Really cool thing. I, I, I was San Marcos. I was Zoom Oh, good. Um, but they had this additional screen where I could do a pen and I could literally annotate as I was speaking. And you said uh, that's like a third party thing? Or? Well, no. I actually, Camtasia Studio has live annotation tools built into Camtasia Studio. And I'm not sure if they're in Camtasia Mac or not. But yes, that was. I'm guessing it's likely that was a third party. And you were using a graphics tablet, right? I forgot what they called it. It was a little plastic thing with a stylus. There was like literally three screens in this silver screen studio. And in the middle, and then I could actually tap it, the pen, and it would go to the screen. So like a stylus. Oh. And then I was able to like. That was probably a smart board symposium, oh. I'm guessing, which is a very expensive monitor, the, the, the touchscreen monitor. But you can do that with any um, uh, PC or Mac with a touchscreen. Actually, I don't think Macs come with touch screens, but you, many PCs can be bought with touch screens now, mm -hmm. and you can actually do the annotation right on the screen with a stylus. But yes, at you. the moment, like, well, because I'm stuck, I, I mean, I have a Mac, and mm -hmm. I wanted to take that over to the home yeah. computer canvases, but what do I do about getting that? Or, or? Well, that, that, if it's the piece of equipment I suspect it is, that's several thousand dollars worth of equipment. <laughs> Yeah, that's with a piece of paper you do like this, Yeah, that that's an alternative. But to do what you're to do what you're describing is probably required of that piece of equipment, but you can do it with a graphics tablet, mm -hmm. and uh, instead of writing directly on the screen, you write on the tablet. Ah. Use the tablet to digitize the freehand input, and you can get the same effect. It's a little harder to do. Mm -hmm. 
takes a different, but the cost is under 100 bucks, the graphics tablet, and a third party and a screen annotation package, which, of which there are a number of available tonight. Now, do you have that in your studio? It's like I'm an adjunct to both campuses, and I always right. think of it, and if I get a Position here we don't have a symposium, but we do have other ways to do that, like I just described. We have tablet PCs with um, touch screens on them that can be written right upon. We There are also lots of other ways to do that sort of thing. Like if you were doing this in a live lecture, you just do it on a whiteboard, right? That's a technique called whiteboarding or board, or to record that is a technique called whiteboarding or board casting. And you can use Snagit for that. And you can use, I wish I'd brought it down, I've said I won't need that, so I won't take it down, but there's a um, little USB document camera you can get for about 70 bucks that will sit up above a piece of paper. And you can actually do this on paper and record it using Snagit. You record it from the computer screen using Snagit. And you can talk, of course, as you're doing. And you can do anything you can do on a whiteboard. Draw pictures, write mathematical symbols, draw graphs and show them. You know, put a piece of graph paper down there and actually create the graph. And that's an exceptionally simple way to do it. And we do have that capability. We have a little studio down the hall. Well, we have a big document camera, actually, that you can use. But you can also get, for home use, a little USB document camera. And I wish I had one. Let me see if I can find it on Amazon for you. Because that's a great question. Because so often you, you can't really get what you need to show students on the computer screen. You need to draw it freehand or write it freehand. Yeah, I hear you. And the company that makes some of the better known ones is called IPEVO, I-P-E-V-O. Don't ask me. I have no idea what that means. But there's what they look like. This one right here is 68 bucks today on Amazon. And it's everything you need. And you just set it over top of a piece of paper. And you write on the piece of paper. And there's an application that comes with the document camera that will put the output from the camera on your computer screen, and you just use Snagit to record that. And you get the same, it's not quite as sexy as what you described, but it's cheap and it's every bit as effective. Yeah. And we'd love to help you with that. If you want to come in, make an appointment to do the first one or two, we can set you up with the same equipment that you might use at home, yeah. and set you up in a quiet place where you can do it, and we'll help you with it. That's what we're here for. This, none of this is complicated, terribly expensive, or difficult to do. You just need some help getting started, and that's exactly what these seminars are for. And exactly why we're here. That's one of the primary things that Online Learning Pathways is here for, is to help you get started with techniques like this. And there's nothing we like doing more than that. Trust me, I'd a lot rather be um, showing you how to do board casting than resetting 15 student passwords, though that's important too, but uh, it's a lot more fun to work with you. So please come by. <laughs> I'll do the students after you leave. Yes, ma'am.